Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of the Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and without being sponsored or getting any promotionals, review these tools that I have seen floating around throughout the year. I have done, at the end of this year at least, over 50 of these. So check out the playlist up above and link down below if you wanna check out some of the other ones that I have done. And today we are going to be reviewing that one. That's the tool that we're going to be reviewing today. and. As with all of these Honest Review series videos, all of my summaries of the tools are at the very end of the video if you wanna go and check those out. All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. I'm Cruz uh, Saunders with A at simplea.com. I've been doing this uh, this world of structure, structured content uh, specifically since uh, the, the late 1990s. And uh, since then I've worked in content management systems, uh, implementations and something called content engineering. And so um, specialized in 2012 and this area of structure and semantics of content sets, uh, which of course are ultimately expressed in various data systems. And so naturally, um, as we started working with some of the world's largest enterprises on data systems and interoperability, we got really into mm -hmm. this uh, content engineering world. So. Mm -hmm. The perspective I'm coming from. Awesome. Great. Alo, would you want to go next? Sure. Hello. I'm Alal Luish. I'm a solutions architect. I head the innovation labs and the product development team here at A. And our unit develops solutions for uh like data data engineering solutions for for our clients. Yeah. So so essentially just very briefly give a quick overview of where we kind of play. One is in mm -hmm. data models interoperability and reuse. So our, our focus is on data models and getting those internal standards and those private standards that happen inside of an enterprise yeah. to play well with public data standards and also to map between departments that express things in different ways. And then also we've been experimenting recently with providing data structure standards to LLMs. Um, because LLMs need to understand what our content is and it, how it's doing. It. it can infer it or we yeah. can begin to tell it. And this whole knowledge graph and, uh, and, and LLM convergence that's happening, we feel like, like core models is really well situated on the, on the structure side. We've created a way to pivot between grids and graph mm -hmm. in a very fluid way and have virtual grids that will basically allow any business user to understand a capsule view of, okay, this is my newsletter content and here's some sample of it, or this is the, this is the data I need for my uh, product record. And that way those business users, those content engineers, those content strategists, all of them can be involved along with the ontologists the, and the, the, the modelers, the people that understand RDF. So it doesn't, we don't replace data catalogs. We don't replace in any way uh, a graph database, uh, or even any kind of uh, graph management software. So it, mm -hmm. it plays well with those, or even semantics tools uh, like Top Rate and Pool Party, uh, mm -hmm. those, those end up uh, providing into uh, schemas that, that core models can help to integrate and then uh, provide in serialized ways out to, by an API call. Okay, so this is core models. Uh, here you can manage models, visualize models. You can import and export. Uh, we're going to start with a new project. Uh, I think this is the best way to uh, to introduce a tool. But before that, I'm going just to show uh, the imported schema.org just to give you an idea. So we have imported uh, schema.org here. So here you see the types from schema.org. Let me show... Uh, some cards here so this is one of the types and you can see the uh, uh card of this type uh the medical calls here and you see the how from where it's inherited you see the uh, hierarchy here as well and uh you can see also some of the examples so you can consider this like a visualizer for for schemas mm -hmm. or nice. yeah yeah why is that needed? This is, I mean, people <laughs> yeah. people really need to see. I love that there's examples too, because sometimes when you're seeing how two things connect together, you're like, wait, what? How is that being defined? And then seeing the example, I think, helps add that context. Yep, 
absolutely and by the way this is publicly available you don't need to log in or sign in it's this portion of the schema navigator is uh is available publicly cool. uh let me just also show maybe we can just um see here okay this one example here the medical specialties like a taxonomy or enumeration mm -hmm. and in core models and this shows you how like the uh, we connect the uh, taxonomies to the structure mm -hmm. so how the taxonomy is connected to the structure the different uh, visualizations of course uh, we support multiple uh, visualizations can mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, er diagrams or uh, also um, uh, other other kind of visualizations and uh, see oh that's cool yep uh example here so yeah uh because you know sometimes you have like a hierarchical structure it's mm -hmm. it makes better sense to just have it like uh a hierarchy without having mm -hmm. all of this you know different uh mm -hmm. different elements like the the nested structure sometimes you no know, it makes sense to see uh to see this in an er diagram and see the different mm -hmm. uh you know, the different indices and expand as you, as you click here uh so yeah this is just uh, one example use case of core models of course mm -hmm. uh, core models will start with a new project let's create some some types and element and see how you can create uh, uh, use these different features of core models here so uh, i'm going to focus on just some particular features uh, related to what what we discussed today the problems the top problems we're trying to solve so i'm going to create some types here for example create medical entity i can just click and add elements directly so i'll add some elements to that like the medical code for example mm -hmm. to add the, the url so this is the type i created one type i'm going to create another like disease for example uh, create a space here let's just create a space call it schema.org so we can of course import schema.org into this space but what i'm going to do is just to um, add some types manually here so i'm going to create a type called medical condition i'm going to say this is in schema.org and i'm going here to uh, create also of course some i can create some elements and i can also use the inheritance here so i can inherit this let's say from medical entity so when you inherit this it will have of course inherit the the properties or the as you call them the uh, the metadata of that 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 element that that type so let's open the graph here you see so the medical condition now here is inherited from medical entity and this is coming from this space called schema.org and you can you can see the different items of the uh, the different elements of the medical entity so uh we can of course now create diff other other uh types like and map them to other entities so for example from the hl7 fire mm -hmm. So we when have. you were saying that one is inheriting from the other, I mean, normally when I hear inheritance, it's it's getting some kind of attribution or data from the parent. Okay. So what is it doing with the schema.org in space? Is it is it actually pulling anything from schema.org or what does that look like? Yeah, so uh, when we import, we have a JSON LD importer on the schema.org importer. We when we import it, we will pull the whole schema.org in. So uh, the example I'm showing here is I'm adding this manually instead of inheriting it from schema.org just to show you the management uh, part of core models, how you can manage and edit models. I'm going to add some other spaces as well, but no, this in this case I'm just adding it manually. And by inheritance, this uh, manually added type here is in inheriting this other type. So yeah, you're right. It's in just inheriting the attributes of, of okay. that type. Yeah. So no mapping is really happening. No, yeah. right now, no mapping. Yeah. 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 You're just building out a schema. I'm just 
Exactly. I'm building a, a schema from scratch, yes. I'm going to create another space. And similarly, like you, we can import a shell 7 fire, but I'm going to create that manually. And then we can talk about importing. So let's say I have another space. You can, of course, have imagine here having all of your systems, internal systems, and the systems you integrate with as kind of spaces or portions of the graph you're building. Mm -hmm. so that you can have for each system you have it's it has its own models and then it can map to these other systems so it's when you have a lot of external schema that you're working with you just import them as you need it exactly yeah 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 we we, we like to to look at them almost as mix-ins right where you're it's mm -hmm. like uh you know let's let's pull in schema.org let's pull in data let's pull in mm -hmm. uh hl7 fire let's pull in you know owl other other kinds of terminologies out there that we want to be able to map to and then uh get them all uh into a a set of spaces that can that can then be uh mapped. Intermix. yeah that's exactly cool yep so yeah i've just added another type it's called condition definition um just to show the way we do mapping here. So I can say that, okay, I want to map the medical condition, which is coming from schema.org to the uh, condition definition, for example. So what I can do, I can just click here and I can choose the search for the type I want to map to. So this is condition definition. So um, yeah, we can now see that this, this type is mapped to this other type this comes from schema.org and this mm -hmm. comes from HL, HL7. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So just with a couple of clicks, now we're mapped and you can see mm -hmm. the relationships in the graph. And now we've got an ontological connection that is machinable. Um, yeah. You can uh, create, you can embed the, your workflow here, you can create a custom workflow like, okay, this is in draft, this is published. I want mm -hmm. to also talk about the um, collaboration. Um, uh, features here. So this is, as Chris has mentioned, is integrated with, with Slack. So I can now here, I can ask questions uh, like, for example, is I, I can mention, of course, entities in my graph. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. yeah. I just. Uh, oh, this is great. Something. So then if you're having a large mapping project where most of the time people are just still doing it in Excel, <laughs> With the SMEs, exactly. at least most of the time, there's like, oh, well, you just, you know, divide these up and then you have a meeting and then people talk about the problems that they were having. Whereas this just cuts all that out and you're like, oh, hey, did this, does this make sense with this mapping? Did you have the same problem? I love this. This is great. Yep. Exactly. And we can, of course, mention um, the team members added to this space. So um, you can mention users and Karen's going to be uh, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, yeah. You so... did say there's a there's a ontology model behind the scenes for this, right? Like this is this is the interface that we all see that was very very easy for an SME SME to to go through and and use. Um, but on the back end, it's it's creating an ontology mapping file. Is that what I'm understanding? That's that's correct. We're actually. Uh, Maybe it's time to talk a little bit technically about the uh, um, the tech stack we're using here. So Core Models mm -hmm. is is not a graph database. It's mm -hmm. uh, like a, a graph management solution. So mm -hmm. uh, we have integrated. Uh, we have used RangoDB as a uh, as a mm -hmm. provider. We have so it's it's a it's a vendor agnostic, mm -hmm. and also graph land language agnostic. So uh, right now this project is linked to Azure Cosmos DB and use. Uh, um, the the yeah they use it as a provider, um, and the Gremlin as as the query uh, the graph query language. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have also in some other projects connect like connections to Neo Neo 4 J as well with Cipher. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a a, gra a vendor agnostic and um, also graph language agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, everything you create here you create here is actually created in the graph, the physical graph. So yeah, each each project, of course, can also have its uh, vendor, and uh, you can configure that in each in each project. I'm going to uh, use one of the pre-added uh, 
relationships that's controlled list to say like this i've just added a, a taxonomy here it's called medical specialty i'm just going to link it to this element for example to say see oh that's where the values will come from yeah, we, mm -hmm. yeah here we go Great. so yeah I've, I've just yeah let me also inherit this from medical entity just to show so here we go we have this medical specialty it has a control list this is the control list and then you have the uh, the other elements so you can easily create of course new relations uh, we have also a place here to manage manage these relation groups, like control list. You can add other relation, like you can have a specific. The relations here are the column names. The yeah, this is the column name. Yes, the relation here is a column name in this grid. Correct. Yeah, but of course, it will be represented in multiple other ways. So we have multiple components here. You can uh, we we call this the workbench, and then you can. Um, uh, you can see these different different uh, uh, items in multiple different ways. Uh, Cruz has also mentioned the the virtual grids. So what makes this different from Airtable or, for example, um, Google Sheets or any spreadsheet mm -hmm. is that the, this grid that you can create as many grids as you want and have different teams working on different grids. So the you know sometimes you have this maybe used by the marketing unit, the marketing team. They don't have to see all of this. They just need to see some columns. But the the good thing here is that these grids, the data in these grids are not owned by the grid, by the cell itself. It's owned by the graph. And then the grid here is just, you know, you can just configure it. You can go here and say, okay, in this grid, I want these columns. I want this, uh, I want these relations to show up. And then you share that grid with, with your uh, team, right? So did you say that you can actually start because I know this is not ETL per se, but can you run the pipeline of the data behind these schema or is that like a separate element? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so again, it's uh, it will make the ETL low code. So it will minimize the effort on doing mm -hmm. the ETL. So what you, you have the ability to create different columns here, we call them uh, mix-ins. Uh, you have the ability to, uh, you know, re have different relations, relate different things together. So mm -hmm. you can build in one grid, say, call it, I, this is the ATL operation between this system and that system. You can create a grid for that. You can um, have the conf everything you need here in a kind of low code, you know, uh, platform where developers can also have their input in here. And then you can use the channels. So we have, we have, um, we have an API, uh, two API endpoints. We have RISFOL and we have GraphQL endpoint. So you can query that. You can um, integrate it with, within your ETL uh, process. We, we also have many uh, mm -hmm. flat file exports. So you can also export it in uh, whatever format and use that to, uh, you can say, reduce the dependency on hard-coded transformations. Right. So, uh, of course, we have some other uh, ways to do that as well. Like we have ways to uh, uh, extend core models with uh, what we call plugins. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this plugin over here is uh, using the JSON LD importer. We have other plugins for Fire and others. So you can you can have yours. Uh, of course, you can call this via API as well. Um, I'm going actually to try adding, I have one model here uh, for diseases it's called narrow fibromatosis NF. Let me create a space for that and I would like to import it. So I have the JSON LD of that here. This is the, the whole model. I'm going to import it into this project. So I will use the, the GitHub URL mm -hmm. and I, I want to import into this space, it's called it just NF. Import. So it's uh, the import process may take a minute or two. We'll parse the file and it will generate the schema and it will import this uh, project into, into the, uh, import this into this uh, namespace. 
but once you have that done, you can also export to different to different formats. Like you can have. Uh, a... So this is still just the model, right? Like you're not actually populating with any of the data that would be behind the models. Asking like this is not doing the actual ETL, it's, piece, yeah. the load part, right? It's no. not doing. Okay. Okay. Right. Cool. Okay. 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 Yeah. That is good yeah. context. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, it's we, not. We, we do have what we do store is exemplar data. Which okay, is, cool. It, so you can see where there's issues with the mappings, right? Yeah, exactly. So there, okay, is, cool. a, there is a single instance data uh, mm -hmm. associated with any given schema object. And, and we, we really encourage the use of instance of that uh, exemplar for, so humans can better understand the schemas okay. that. Great, 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 great. Okay, that's what I was asking. That, that's good.